Hello and welcome to another lecture from the Novice Anesthesia Programme. This talk will cover the code IAC C01, correctly identifying patients for surgery. The learning objectives for this talk include understanding the importance of patient identification and confirmation of the surgical site and procedure, revising at what stage in the patient's journey these identification checks need to be done, being confident with what criteria needs to be met for patient verification, and finally, becoming familiar with the World Health Organization's three-step universal protocol for checking the patient and operation. As we've previously mentioned, you can map multiple domains to a work-based placed assessment. So in addition to uh, mapping IAC C01, you could map uh, the additional curricula that I've listed here. This again just shows how you go about uploading a WPBA to the Royal College LLP platform. So why is the topic of this talk important? Checking a patient's identity might seem like something we routinely do, but if errors are made in the case of wrong patient, wrong site or wrong surgery, these can have catastrophic effects for all those involved, patients, staff and the hospitals. Last year, over the course of 11 months, there were still 219 never events attributed to wrong surgical site being operated on. Taking great care, communicating well and being vigilant in doing these checks is essential to avoid these errors occurring. It is both our responsibility as anaesthetists and also the responsibility of all other members of the theatre team to ensure that we do these checks to avoid any misidentification of the patient or the procedure. In 2009, the World Health Organization set out a three-step process called the Universal Protocol, which is used for ensuring correct patient, correct surgical site and correct procedure. These will now be discussed in turn. They are step one verification, step two marking and step three the timeout or surgical pause. Step one is verification. The patient's identity, surgical site and procedure should be verified at every stage from the decision to operate until the procedure commencing. This includes when the consent is taken, and also any time that care is delivered to another person. For example, when the patient is being transported to theatre by a porter from the ward, and when the patient is entering the theatre complex. This includes entering the anaesthetic room, when often our first checks are completed. In addition to Verbal verification of identity, the National Patient Safety Agency recommends that all hospital inpatients also wear standardised identity wristbands. These should be white with black text or if an allergy or sensitivity is identified, they should be red with a white panel and black text. They should ideally only have the core identifiers for the patient. These are last name, first name, date of birth, and NHS number. Pre-procedure verification occurs before the induction of anaesthesia and there's a check completed by the anaesthetist and either an ODP or a theatre nurse. This occurs by verifying the patient's identity with the patient themselves and also by looking at the identity wristband. They should be asked both their name and a second piece of identifiable information, this being date of birth or address. The procedure they are undergoing should also be confirmed at this point with the patient. 
Care should also be taken to ensure the correct spelling on the identity bracelet to avoid misidentification. And all efforts should be made to include the patient in this identity check. For example, arranging an interpreter if they are unable to communicate in English or arranging to have a parent or next of kin present if the patient is unable to verify their identity themselves. Step two is marking. The site or sites for the operation should be marked by the operating surgeon. Ideally, this mark should be made when the patient is awake and able to confirm the site of the operation. The marking process is particularly important for cases of laterality in orthopaedic surgery and also when identifying a level for spinal surgery. In the UK, this is indicated by an arrow being drawn in permanent marker so it is clearly visible and is not removed during skin preparation. Ideally, the person who has marked the surgical site should be present for incision. This mark should be checked at the time of pre-procedure verification by the nurse and the anaesthetist prior to entering the operating room. The final stage in the universal protocol is the timeout, also called the surgical pause. This was adapted from pre-fight safety checks just before takeoff and forms part of the WHO's surgical safety checklist. It is a final opportunity to check that all team members are happy that it is safe to begin and is a check that involves the patient if they are awake, the operating surgeon, the scrub nurse and the anaesthetist as well as all members of the theatre team and as a final pause before skin incision to verify the patient's identity, procedure and surgical site. It is also an opportunity to raise any issues before the operation begins. That concludes this talk on correctly identifying patients for surgery. I hope I've highlighted the importance of being vigilant in carrying out these checks. We have also discussed what stages these identity checks should be completed, the importance of cross-checking patients' identity with their identity wristbands they should be wearing, what checks need to be completed, for example, checking the patient's name and at least one piece of identifiable information, and finally, we have discussed in turn the steps in the Universal Protocol, which include verification, marking and timeout, which are used as a guide to aid patient safety. Thank you for listening. I hope this talk has been useful. If you wouldn't mind completing our short survey on SurveyMonkey, this helps us improve the content we are making so it is the most useful to you.